Hi there. I've had a few inquiries asking what types of comms kits I use. I currently have two I use on a regular basis and I'm in the process of building a third which isn't quite ready for prime time yet but at some point I'll do a video on that third kit I'm actively working on which will feature a Yaesu FT891, a pack frame for that radio, as well as some accessories that will go with that kit. But in today's video I will show you the two I'm actively using and the first is this TYT mobile unit I featured in episode one. And in that episode, I detailed how to assemble the metal pack frame with the radio, as well as the connectors I used during the assembly. This radio is a two meter and 70 centimeter mobile unit. And I do use it on a regular basis as both a base station in my shop and for use in my truck. This model is the TH7800, which I believe is now discontinued, but you can currently get the comparable TH9800 through Amazon as well as some other outlets. There's also some other model versions of this radio, but I believe the 9800 is fairly similar to this one in terms of functionality. And I know they both have things like the crossband repeat function. And uh, when it's powered on, there's a uh, dual display. I believe the 9800 retails for somewhere around $200. I have this one enclosed in an Armalock pack frame. And since the posting of episode one, I've added a pouch on the side. And that attaches with molly rigging. And to power the radio... I'm using this Revolt G2, and when using the power supply, I tend to run the mobile unit on the lowest power setting as not to drain the uh, Revolt G2. When operating it in my truck, I'm able to connect it to the vehicle's battery, and I also uh, run a larger antenna as opposed to this uh, small Aubrey one. I've run this radio extensively in my pickup truck, and it's... Uh, been fairly decent. I, I don't really have any complaints. And if you're looking for a, a decent mobile unit that won't break the bank, then uh, perhaps the newer version of, of this one, the 9800, might be something for you to consider. Okay, I'll move on to the next comms kit that I've got. I got the idea for this next kit from one I saw on a police cruiser. Recently I was having some mobile radio serviced at a local Motorola shop. And as I was approaching the entrance of the shop, I saw a police SUV parked on the street. And as I was walking by, I saw a bag in the front passenger side seat with several radios and some other accessories in it. And I thought it was pretty cool. So I decided to make my own version of that. And that's how I came up with this kit which has gone through several iterations since I began putting this thing together. I have two HTs connected to hand microphones, and those HTs have connectors so I can switch the uh, antennas out easily. And you may recognize some of the connectors from Episode 9 when I was discussing interoperability and why it's helpful to standardize your equipment. And I know the microphones are a little bit cheesy, but a while back, I purchased one just to mess around with a Bofeng UV5R and connect a hand mic to it. And eventually it kind of grew on me. So I purchased another one for a um, HF rig I also have in this bag. And um, the mics are replicas of the military version of the H250 hand microphones. And while they're not the same quality as the military version, I still think they're kind of cool. I've got them wrapped in some desert camo, which also a little bit cheesy, but seemed like the thing to do at the time. I labeled each one of the mics after the radio it's connected to. So that way I didn't lose track of what I'm doing while managing multiple radios. I'm usually a little hesitant to show some of my comms kits because I don't want to give the impression I think you need to buy all the same stuff and you need to assemble the same kit. This is just intended to show you some of the configurations I experiment with. And to be candid, tomorrow I'll probably find something I don't like about the current iteration 
of this comms bag and change it up again. When I started putting this kit together, the intent was to have something I could quickly deploy during an emergency and grab at a moment's notice. I wanted multiple radio, radios for monitoring, extra batteries, as well as the ability to trickle charge batteries using solar power in the field. And uh, that's basically how I came up with this comms kit. So uh, let's take a look at what's in the bag. On the right side of the comms kit, I have an HF rig. That's the Zygu X5-105. And this is mostly what I use for QRP work, which basically just means transmitting at reduced power. And I do have this hand mic for it. And I'm going to move this back a little bit just so you can see it better. But I just plug this in and I've got a very portable antenna set up for this, this HF rig. And this uh, transmits and receives from 160 meters to 6 meters. And I don't usually work on all of those uh, bands, but this is a Comet portable antenna system. And inside the bag, I've got a, um, a tripod for it. So that's the HF rig. And next up is the RD5R. That's a DMR that I have, and it looks like a UV5R. It's styled after uh, the UV5R, uh, but it's a digital radio. And um, as you can see, I've got the connector for easily removing the antenna and switching out antennas. Next is the FT60, and that's a Yesu radio. And you've probably seen this in one of the previous episodes. I think I showed this one in episode two when I was talking about budget HTs. And in the back of the comms kit, I do have a very small solar panel which I can use to trickle charge my Revolt G2. Uh, this power supply also powers the HF rig. The HF rig has a built-in battery in it, but I mainly run this external power source when I'm, I'm running this rig. And then once that runs down, I'll hook it up to the uh, solar panel, let it trickle charge, and I'll, I'll run operations off the internal battery. I also have a Yesu FT65. This is really just kind of a, just a backup radio I've got in case I need a spare one for a friend or family member. On the side, I've got two small magnetic antennas. So if I need to connect my HTs to the top of my truck, I can do that. And these also have the, the connectors I talked about in episode nine. In the top of the bag, I just have some odds and ends in here. Electrical tape, a lighter, multi-tool, Swiss Army knife. And in the front pouch, I have a pen with a uh, pad of paper to write with in case I need to take down any traffic. I've just got some extra pens in here. I have an extra flashlight. And inside the bag, as I mentioned, there's a tripod for the antenna system. I'll just put that over here, I guess. I also have a small tool kit in case I need to repair something in the field. It's a handy little kit I got from Home Depot. Another writing pad. Uh, it's a rocket book, so um, if I take down notes, I can electronically send it to 
my email address if I needed to. And the rest of this stuff is um, all of my cables. I've got USB power, power cables so I can recharge my RD5R as well as uh, my Yaesu FT60. I've got some more cables for my cell phone. And most of the cables I buy, I usually get them at a company called powerworks.com. They have uh, quite a few decent cables for amateur radio work. Um, this is just a 12-volt uh, charger for the FT60. What else do I have in here? I have uh, some coax cable to run from the antenna to the HF rig. And it looks like this is um, some cables for my solar panel to connect to the Revolt G2. And I also have a tablet in here. And I have some extra cables for this tablet to connect to the RD5R in case I wanted to um, do any kind of APRS work. In this front pouch, I have a spare wearable antenna, some extra batteries for the RD5R. Another battery charger. This is actually just for my phone. This is a digi rig for my computer and the FT60. A tin full of connectors, and these are some of the connectors I talked about in episode 9. I have them wrapped in this plastic because I don't like listening to my equipment rattle when I'm walking around, so I've got it wrapped in that just to kind of keep the noise level down. And what else do I have in here? I've got two more batteries. One is for the spare FT65. And this one's actually for my VX6. And I usually keep that one on me, but this is pretty much where the spare battery lives. And that is essentially it for this kit. I know it's a, a lot of stuff and I probably have more things than I need in here. Again, this is just one of many iterations I've gone through with this bag and I'll probably change it up at some point again, but um, this is just kind of an idea of what I'm currently experimenting with. So uh, hopefully this will give you some ideas on maybe some kits that you might want to build. And uh, if so, then uh, let me know what you're doing in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video and that's all for now.